in this video we are going to discuss about python program to print factorial of a given number uh, first let's see the program explanation in the board and then we will see practically in the computer uh, we know how to calculate factorial of a number let the number is 5 uh, then in order to calculate factorial of 5 we have to multiply the digits the numbers from 1 to 5 so 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 so 1 into 2 2 2 into 3 6 6 into 4 24 24 into 5 120 so 120 is the the result of 5 factorial let the number is 4 then in order to determine factorial of 4 then we have to multiply the digits from 1 to 4 so 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 so 1 into 2 means 2 2 into 3 means 6 6 into 4 means 24 so 24 is the result of 4 factorial. Now let's see the program. The first statement is n is equal to int of input of enter a number. Here by using input function, we can read data from the keyboard. Input function is just like a scan of function which we use in C programming language. But here the problem with input function is input function returns the data as a string. But here uh, we want to perform operation on the number. So we have to convert that string into integer. So that should be done with the help of the int function. So int of input of enter a number. So now that string will be converted into the integer. So let us assume that the number is 5. So now the number 5 is stored in n. So here in order to determine the factorial of a number. Here we are taking a variable called fact whose value is 1. Why? Because uh, here we have to perform the multiplication. 1 into anything. So 1 multiply anything is equal to anything only. So by multiplying uh, a number with 1, the result won't change us. So that's why here uh, we have taken the initial value of the fact is 1. So 1 into 100 means 100. So 1 into 70 means 70. The result won't change us. So let the initial value of fact is 1. Next year we have taken a for loop. Uh, why? Because uh, how to calculate factorial of a number? If the number is 5, then we have to multiply the digits from uh, 1 to 5. 1 to 5. So the initial value is 1, whereas the final value is that number. That number. Here the number is 5. Let n value is 4. Then we have to multiply the numbers from 1 to 4. So here the initial value is 1, whereas the final value is that number. So here we know what is initial value, what is final value. So, for, so it is better to take the for loop. We know the syntax of the for loop in Python programming. So for i in range of, actually range function accepts three parameters. The first parameter is called as start value. The second parameter is called as stop value. Uh, whereas the third parameter is called as uh, uh, step index, step value, step value. If you don't provide any step value, then by default step value will becomes 1. So here the starting value is 1 whereas what is the stop value n plus 1. n plus 1 means uh, n plus 1 won't be considered. So here we can repeat the loop only from 1 to n. So that is the problem here. So n plus 1 if you take only n if you take only n then the for loop will be repeated from 1 to the 10 minus 1 n minus 1 n won't be considered. Suppose if we have taken n as 5, then here the for loop will be repeated only from 1 to 4 only. But here we have to consider 5 also because we need to multiply with 5 also. So that's why we have taken stop value as n plus 1. So if you take n plus 1, then the for loop will be repeated for n times. n times. Okay. Here the stop is not, uh, here the, what is the last value? Step count, step index. So that is not there. So if the step count is not get there, then the default step count is 1. So every time 1 will be added to its previous value. Okay. So here what is the initial value of i? The initial value is 1. So that 1 will be stored in i. So first i is equal to 1. i is equal to 1. Uh, condition is true only because the for loop will be repeated up to, up to n. Up to n. n plus 1 means n plus 1 won't be considered. The for loop will be repeated up to n only. Up to n only. Here let us assume that n value is 5. So 1 is less than or equal to 5. Okay. No problem. Condition is true. So body gets executed. 
fat is equal to fat into I. The initial value of the fat is 1. So 1 into, in this iteration, what is I value? 1. So 1 into 1 means 1. 1. Okay. Next, next here the, uh, what is the last one? Step count. If step count is not given, then the default step count will become 1. So 1 will be added to its previous I value. Previously I value is 1. So 1 will be added to this I value. So now I will become 1 plus 1 means 2. 2. So 2 is less than or equal to 5. Condition is 2. It is in the range only. So fact is equal to fact into I. So fact is equal to. What is the previous value of fact? 1. What is the value of I? 2. So 1 into 2 means 2. 1 into 2 means 2. So next in the next iteration what will happen? So uh, I is equal to 2 is over. So in the next iteration I value will become I value will become, here the step count is not given. If step count is not given, then the default step count is 1 here. So 1 will be added to i. Okay. What is the previous value of i? 2. So now 2 plus 1 means 3. So that 3 will be stored in i. 3 will be stored in i. So now i become 3. 3. So 3 is less than or equal to 5. Condition is true only. So fact is equal to fact into i. Previously fact value is 2. Now i is 3. So 2 into 3 means 6. 6. So next Step count is not given. So 1 will be added to this value. I value. So 3 plus 1 means 4. So 4 is less than or equal to 5. So condition is true. So fact is equal to fact into I. Previously fact contains 6. Now I value is 4. 6 into 4 means 24. 6 into 4 means 24. Next what we have it. Step count is not given. So default step count is 1. So 1 will be added to I value. So 1 plus 4 means 5. So that 5 will be stored in I. So now I value is 5. I value is 5. So 5 is less than or equal to 5. 5 is less than or equal to 5. Condition is true. So the body gets executed. Fact is equal to previous value of fact is 24. I value is 5. So 24 into 5 means 120. Now fact value will become 120. So next, next, what is the last value? Here the for loop will be repeated up to 5 only. Up to 5 only. So whenever I become 6, the condition will become false. 6 is less than or equal to 5. So the control comes out from the for loop. Here we have to write this statement at the, at the first column. At the first column. Why? Because this statement is not a part of the for loop. Okay. This statement is not a body of the for loop. So print factorial of. Uh, here we have placed factorial of in double quotations. So factorial of will get printed. Here if you want to have a space between off and n. Then give a space after off. Here, uh, here I have given some space. So that space is printed. What is n value? 5. So 5 is, what is the result in factorial? 120. If, if, if we need some space between 5 and ease, then we have to give some space before the ease. Here the before the ease, some space is given. As well as after the ease also some space is given. Ease, what is the value in fact? 120. So 120 will get printed. Suppose if we place n and fact within the double quotations, then n fact will get printed. Those values won't print it. Okay. So in this way, we can determine factorial of a given number. Now let's see practically in the computer. Now let us see the execution. So the first statement is uh, we are reading n a number from the keyboard. So fact is equal to 1 for i in range of. So we have to continue the repetition from 1 to that number. That number. So we have to consider that number also. So that's why the stop value is n plus 1. Uh, the body is fact is equal to fact into i. Next we displayed the result. Now let us execute this program. So enter a number. Let the number is 5. So factorial of 5 is 120. 120. So let us execute one more time. Let the number is 6. So 120 into 6 means what? 720. So we will get factorial of 6 as 720. So with this, uh, we can conclude that uh, our program is working properly.